So if the goals of this week are to start to look at WordPress, we need to do a few things. Um, I'm going to put some bullet points right here, which I'll put these into the, the net, into Canvas if you want them, or if you want to write this down. I'll, I'll give this to you a little bit later. The big idea is um, set up MAMP, create a database, download WordPress software, run WordPress installation. Installation. That's the big ideas, four big steps, which will have little steps that we will do together. Uh, we already know a little bit about MAMP. We did it last week. Um, so that's already installed. We just have to run it and turn it on. We'll talk about how to create a database and what a database is in a moment. We're going to get the software for WordPress. That's a free download. And then we're going to run through this installation process, which will just ask you a bunch of of questions which the first time we might not know every answer to but that's why we'll do it together and then subsequent times you'll be able to do it yourself so this is the big idea of how to install WordPress um, and this would work on a um, on something like MAMP or something like on a regular provider like GoDaddy or Bluehost or these other companies that we'll talk about later Remember the big difference between MAMP and a provider is that when you've got your site running on MAMP, it's not on the real internet. Only you can see it at your computer where you're sitting at. And eventually you want your website on the real internet, victorsbakery.com. But we are at the moment using MAMP offline. No one can see it unless they're sitting at your computer. That's why you're going to take a screenshot so I can see that you did it. But that's why we're using MAMP because it's free. Okay, step one on our computers right here. We've already installed MAMP for you. We need to run MAMP. How do I get to MAMP from this screen right here? Do I say, hey Alexa, turn on MAMP? Or what do I do? <laughs> Start menu, yes. And then we'll go find MAMP in the, um, the menu. So go down to MAMP and run MAMP right there. So turn on the MAMP software. Uh, let that start up. By default, it will activate all the little uh, green dots of uh, the various uh, servers and services. And if it doesn't, we can click Start Server. But that should be starting up in one moment. Now, if you were having trouble at home, uh, there were other readings that were in the readings of that week that said here's some possibilities of why there might be errors and sometimes you need to go over to the um, preferences so if you had trouble you might look at the preferences screen and there's uh, some options over here that you can change like ports the default is that it's going to run on these particular ports and sometimes, for whatever reason, your, your computer blocks it, and then those green dots never turn on. So changing these to like, I don't know, 99 and 98 and whatever, sometimes, and you click OK, sometimes that'll fix an issue that's going on. Um, someone also said that when they were having trouble, their version over here of PHP, when they set this over to the other version, 7120, it seemed to work. So unfortunately, sometimes there is a little bit of tech support when this works, when this doesn't work right out of the box. You know, I made it look so easy in class when we did it, it just worked. But unfortunately, sometimes people's computers are a little different sometimes and you have to go to the settings. Okay, so this is showing that MAMP is running, the various software is running in the background. Let's go over to the web start page. You don't do too much here, you just confirm that it's running. Let's go to the web start page right here, open web start page. Making a note up on the address bar, that's the, that's the address, basically, um, localhost slash MAMP. Once you've got MAMP running, you have a special web server called localhost, not localhost.com or .org, it's just localhost. And I'm looking at the MAMP main screen here, because it says MAMP there. So up here, set up MAMP, which is download, install, just use all the defaults, start the app, 
go to web start, which is also just a link there, just for completeness. You're going to memorize localhost slash something. This will change all the time. This will always be the same. You're always on localhost. You're always on your personal web server on your computer. But I'm now looking at the MAMP home screen website. Later, I'll create my WordPress account, and it'll be something like localhost slash WordPress, or it can be localhost slash my site, whatever this folder name is here, which I'll remind you where at. Whatever that folder name is, is part of the address. So I'm here on the big old welcome screen. OK, everything's good. Everything's welcome. Um, let's go to tools, PHP my admin. PHP my admin is software for us to create and manage databases. So in the notes here, again, I'll put these in, in Canvas, uh, create database. So web, so uh, MAMP web start page. From here, you go to Tools menu and then PHP My Admin. Use PHP My Admin to create and manage databases. Raise your hand, have you heard of that word before? Database. Uh, a lot of people, perhaps. Uh, what do you think it means? What's your, your opinion of what is a database? Anyone have an idea? Something that stores data, yeah, pretty much. A place where you store your data. Um, a collection of information. It's, it's a software or a file or a place, basically, where you store data, information. This is our database viewer and creator and deleter software, PHE My Admin. If you look up on the address bar, it's technically localhost slash PHE My Admin. It has also a mention about what language, but now, again, it's on the local host server. It's not on the real internet. It's on your computer. As long as MAMP is running, you have access to the special server. And it's localhost slash page my admin. This is the software where I can view my databases, create databases, delete them, etc. And so basically, a web a, a database. A database is where you store all the info about your website, about your WordPress website. Specifically, WordPress and other types of advanced websites. About your WordPress website. Because with an advanced type of website like WordPress, you can have the ability for people to log into your site. Uh, you can have different customers. You can have products, a shopping cart. You can have a chat system, a lot of advanced things. In our level of knowledge, with three weeks of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, we cannot create these advanced projects. Those advanced projects need a lot more knowledge in those three languages. But software like WordPress lets us create a pretty advanced website pretty fast, shielding us from the code but what it's doing is it's storing all of those pieces and information in a database, everything about your website. The background color, how many um, products you have, um, who can log in as an admin, um, down the copyright information at the bottom. Everything that your website is is basically stored in a database. And with PHP My Admin, we can, we can manage that. At the moment, we've got these databases, something called Information Schema, MySQL, Performance Schema, and Sys. So there's not much to really look at that. Um, I guess if you're curious, you can click on Information Schema, and here's like all of this deep down data that's um, built into the default PHP account. I don't know, like files. I'm just clicking randomly. Um, is, this is the data right there, like every single thing about, like, here's where the help system is at. It's an entry in a database. You know, a database is just entries. It's just files. It's keeping track of everything that a website is. So just randomly, I'm looking at this database information schema. 
This is really advanced. How do you think I might create a brand new database? Do you think maybe they call this button here new for some reason? There we go. That's how we create a database. These are the four databases we currently have, and it says new. Let's create a new database. Click on that new button on the left. This little icon, have you ever seen this icon? It looks like a, like a can of cola, I guess. But that's often the representation of a database. This like tube cylindrical thing is often the icon that means database for some reason. Click on new. The screen changes here that to say databases. These are the current databases we have. And it says here, create a database, give it a name. We can call this anything we want. Anything we want, let's call this kitty cat. Your database name does not need to match the name of your website. It can be anything. And I'm choosing a name that's different than the, than the lecture text. Just to show you, you can pick different names. And sometimes you need to choose different names because every website basically has its own database. Short answer is every website should have its own database. Long answer is not really, but short answer. Um, every website should have its own database. Um, so I'm just going to create whatever the name of this database is and click Create. Now I will say right here, lowercase, no spaces is what you want to do. So don't put any spaces in uppercases. Just Create. On the left side, if this worked, on the left side now it shows you've got a new database. So let's confirm that. Did everyone just create a new database? Anyone having any trouble? We should have a new database for the notes here. We're in the Peachy My Admin screen. Uh, I guess I'll note it like this as well. You get to the screen as well by going to here, PHP, my admin. There's an explanation what a database is. After we've gotten to this tool screen, we'll say left menu, new. And then on the right box, um, and database name, and then click create. And so then at the left menu, if you see a brand new entry, it worked. You created a new database. So I've got here a new database. We can note database DB does not need to be named the same as your site. Every WordPress site should have its own database. Keep names simple. Uh, lowercase plus no spaces plus no special symbols. So dashes or dots or whatever. Just keep it a simple, simple name. If you if you created a database right now with a really fancy name, just go back and create a new one. You can delete databases, but don't worry about it. Uh, but if you if the one that you created isn't isn't exactly how I'm recommending, just go back and create a new one. It's okay. You have unlimited space basically. Okay, so that gets step one, step two, step three. We need to download the WordPress software, put it in the right place, and then start running the installation. Um, I've already downloaded the software for you, but at home you would want to go get it at wordpress.org this is the official website of WordPress if you get it and anywhere else like download wordpress.com it probably has a virus you want to get it from the official place wordpress.org there is a com which is slightly different you don't really download WordPress there you get it from wordpress.org you will usually on Windows unzip the file. It's going to give you a compressed zipped file because it's full of like a thousand mini files. They're all zipped into one file. You have to unzip it. Right click, unzip. On the Mac, usually it unzips it for you. 
unzip the file. So let's right click extract on Mac auto unzips. And they're going to download somewhere, probably your downloads folder, maybe your desktop. But you've downloaded a zipped file. You need to unzip it somehow. And then we will use that file. But just to check it here, let's take a quick look at WordPress.org. Uh, WordPress.org. This is open source software you can use to create a beautiful website, blog, or app. Does anyone know what that term means, open source? Any opinions on the definition of open source? Free, basically. Source or source code is the code that makes up a website or an app. Source code. Traditionally, um, whoever you know made the code of a particular uh, website, uh, they own all of the code. Um, but there's a movement of open source, which is that, yeah, we made a website or we made some code or whatever, and we give it out to everyone in the world to use it for free. And so WordPress falls under that, that they've made their source code open. Anyone can download it, look at the code, edit the code, change the code. But a lot of other software, you cannot do that. You're actually violating their copyright or terms of service. There's fines and all of that. But WordPress is software that's free to use, basically. And uh, this is the website that you want to go to to learn all about, for example, support. Go to documentation or look at plugins, which we'll talk about later, or themes, which is something that you will need to do for this assignment about blog hosting. This is the main official website where you would download it, where you would read the manual. Have you heard of that famous tech term, RTFM? It stands for Read the Funky Manual because you will learn a lot if you read the manual. If they created the software and put it out for you and gave you links and such about reading how it works, read it at some point. Um, you know, if you just go ahead and click around, you might not really figure it out. Um, there is a manual for all of this stuff. You can also get some cool WordPress shirts right there. Extra credit if you buy a WordPress shirt and bring it to class one day. So, WordPress. The only thing you need I'm showing you at the moment is this is where you would go to eventually go to read the documentation. You read about themes and you would get it. You don't have to download it. We've done it for you. But in this download button is we're at home. You would click get WordPress and download. Um, I don't like that they have this other icon right here. Ignore this. You never really need to use this. The tar GZ file that's like really advanced. It's a kind of a zip file, but no one uses it except if you're working in Linux servers and such. Um, so at home, you would download with the big blue download button. We've already done that for you. Let's go see where we downloaded it for you. If you minimize everything, minimize all your windows so that we can go to the this PC icon. Let's go to the desktop and go to this PC. Double click this PC. We've already downloaded this for you on the C drive. If you have a flash drive, you can copy this to save yourself a little effort. Although our version that we downloaded is a few weeks old. Maybe it's like 5.1 and the latest version is 5.3. Not a big deal, but we when we set this up before the beginning of the semester it was already a few weeks ago. So the version I'll show you here is slightly old. But it's inside local disk C. And there's that folder, WordPress. Inside that folder is a ton of other files that make up the whole installation um, foundation of WordPress. But this is the uncompressed, unzipped file ready for us to use on the next steps. When you do this at home or at another computer, you download from WordPress.org, you unzip it, and you're going to get your own uncompressed file just like that. Okay, so the step here 
you go to the site, you download it, you unzip it, copy the unzipped, and I'm going to note that several times, people do this all the time on accident, they copy the zip folder. No, you need to copy the unzipped, the one that's ready to, to, to go. Copy the unzipped folder to the htdocs folder of MAMP. Okay, that should sound familiar. Remember last week we talked about this htdocs folder. Um, a valid website has to exist inside the htdocs folder of the MAMP folder. This WordPress uh, software, we need to copy it into htdocs. So I'm going to leave this window open perhaps and open another one. And it was so long ago, help me remember. How do I get to the htdocs folder from this top level here? Where's htdocs? Anyone remember? Local disk C, yep. MAMP, great. htdocs, easy. There it is. So in the C drive, in the MAMP folder, in the htdocs folder, you're going to copy, right click copy, right click paste. Copy the WordPress installation software into your htdocs folder. Copy. The reason I might copy it instead of moving it is, let's say I start my site right now and I'm playing with it for a few hours and I want to make another site. I want to make another site to practice and I have another idea for another site. Well, you need a copy in the htdocs folder, website one, website two, website three. You need different folders for different copies of your WordPress sites. And if you only, if you took the original one, if you moved it instead of copied it, you've got only that one copy that you've already changed. So if you're trying to make a brand new website, you're about to work on a version that's already been edited. So just doing this simple action of making a copy leaves the original. And if you need to make another website later, you can change it. Let's do this. Once you copy over your WordPress into htdocs, let's change the name of the folder to my site. This will be for practice that the database can be called anything you want. You know, these various lectures and documentations will say, type this. But I want to show you, your database can be called anything. And to have multiple websites in MAMP, they just need to be in their own folder with their own unique name. So even though I copied over the folder called WordPress, I can change it to whatever I want, as long as you don't change what's inside. Inside of it is still all of those files there. But I've got a brand new project called My Site. That's the name of my website. The folder, the address. So we'll say copy the unzip folder to htdocs folder. If you want multiple WordPress installations, each one needs to have its own folder named differently. Or uniquely. If I already have a website there in a folder called WordPress and I try to drop another copy of the folder WordPress it'll erase what's already there probably it'll mess up what's already there. You need to have different folders with different names and then there are different sites and then each site needs its own database and then we run the WordPress installation next step. So to get to the installation screens, we now, in our web browser, need to go to the address where this site is at. My example, localhost slash the name of your site. So if you go back to the browser, localhost. Slash the name of your site. What is the name of your site? My site. It's the name of the folder 
in the htdocs folder my site the one that a moment ago was called WordPress now we change the name of the folder calling it my site if you called it something else it'll be whatever you call the name of the folder is what's going to be on that part of the address localhost slash whatever you called it so if I had another folder in htdocs folder you know don't do this but if I had another folder called Victor's Bakery and here I also want to keep it simple in terms of no spaces and such if I had a different folder in htdocs I would access that folder that website with localhost slash Victor's Bakery. Again, don't do this, but I'm just showing you. There's nothing there. It's a totally empty folder, of course. But as long as I've got a folder with its own unique name, I've got a different website. OK, did everyone get this, uh, welcomes, this multilingual welcome screen? Anyone having any trouble? Are we up to this screen at least? OK, so. Uh, WordPress, because it's open source and global, it's multilingual. It um, can be installed in every language, basically. So pick whatever language is best for you to set this up as. I'll select the default. Continue. This says, in order for WordPress to work, we need a, a few things. We need a name of a database. Okay, check. We created a database a little while ago. We need the username and the password to get to the database. These two things are listed right here on the MAMP web start page, right here. To access the My MySQL, MySQL databases, we have a username of root and a password of root. This is the default. That's what this is saying. You're going to need to access your database and your path, your database's username and your database's password. MAMP says that the default to do that is root plus root. So I'll put that in the notes in a moment. And then the database host. The host is like, what server is it on? We are on localhost. So localhost is the server. Table prefix, don't worry about that. If you want to run, run more than one on a single database, which we're not. Each website will have its own database. I'll put it in the notes here, and then we will see what happens when we do that in one moment. So we'll say run the installation. The WordPress wizard starts. You need to know your. Um, you need to know your um, database name. Alice, could you lock that door over there, please? Someone just opened it. No, Matthew went out. Oh, sorry. I thought someone came in. <laughs> Never mind. Sorry. You, you need to know your database name, username, which is root, password, which is root. Well, we know all of this. We created a database together. What was the one we created together? The database in PHP My Admin. It was one really funny. Kitty cat. The name of the folder where our site is, yes, is my site. But when we created the database for fun, we called it kitty cat, which can be anything we want. OK, so from here, let's click Let's Go. OK, it asks, what's the database name? It assumes WordPress, which it should not assume, because we created a database called kitty cat. So change that to say kitty cat, exactly as how you typed it back on the PHP My Admin screen. To remind yourself, if the window is still open, I created a database, called it kitty cat, lowercase, no spaces, etc. That's the name that it's asking for here. Username for the MySQL database, use, uh, password for the MySQL database. As I said, MAMP tells you right here. Both are root, lowercase. So password is, or username is root, password is root. Besides that, you don't need to change anything. The database exists in a certain server, a certain host. 
localhost, which is this whole MAMP thing. Um, you can technically have different database, uh, different websites in one database as long as each one has its own prefix. Don't worry about that. So what we worry about is what's the name of the database, what's the user, what's the password. Besides that, click Submit. If you get an error here, you missed uh, typing the name of your database. Remember, it was the database that you created exactly as how you created it. You um, could have also missed that the username and passwords were both root, lowercase. If it gives you an error, you want to return. If it worked, click Run. Anyone having any trouble? All right, this is the welcome to the famous five minute installation. We've been spending more than five minutes. They're lying to us. It takes a little longer than five minutes. But once you do it the first time, it should go faster the next time. Here's the part now where you can choose some unique stuff. Um, we're going to create, ultimately at the end result of the class, we're going to have a nice big website for your particular like portfolio to show off your skills of web design. But in these early, uh, sessions of the class we're playing with these like testing projects and they're not like full real websites yet so here it asks you what would you like the name of your website to be you can make it up however you want if you want to create something seriously at this point you could but it'll probably change as we go through the semester but let's say my family has a bakery on main street and we want to make a website so that we sell our stuff on the website so I'm going to make a website called Victor's Bakery. If you want to use the same name, that's fine. If you want to use a different name, that's fine. If you want to use your website idea, that's fine. This can all be changed at any point. Type a title of your website. This is a second set of username and password info, but this you can choose this to be. I'll make a note over here that when we're installing it, so during the wizard, when you're installing it, username and password are root, but when you actually set up your real website, you can pick what you want these to be. As you create your website, you pick your own username and password. You want to write that down somewhere because when this is a, 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 a real website that we're going to work through throughout the semester, you will want to be able to log back into it. So I won't be able to access your username or your password. Now I'm going to use the worst username and the worst password, which is admin and password. And it's going to say that's a terrible password. but for the purposes of the classwork, I'm fine with that. Eventually, when this goes to the real internet, you don't want this at all. You're going to get hacked in two seconds. Um, you could create a real username and a real password if you want right now. We'll talk more about cybersecurity as the class goes on. But just so that I can remember this, because uh, I teach a lot of classes and I deal with a lot of websites. So for me to remember it, I'll just go with something totally simple, admin and password. You have to confirm that, yes, I know this is a terrible password. So turn that on, if necessary. Normally, on a website, you are able to retrieve a password. This is not a full-featured website in that it's not on the internet. When you want to retrieve your um, password on a real website, it's on a real server, and it has a, a, a mechanism for that. This is not a real website on a real server on the real internet. So putting your email here for retrieving it might not really work. So again, you want to make a note of this, take a picture of it, whatever, your own admin and password. You can take mine if you want, but now I know your password. So here you can put whatever you want, real email or not. And all of this can be changed later on. Then we have a check mark about search engine visibility, yes or no. I'm going to leave it by default. Doesn't matter. We're not on the real internet. 
But the point of that is, if you were on the real internet, you would want the search engines to find your website. You would want Google, you would want Yahoo, Bing, whatever. You would want the search engines that when someone searched for a topic, they found your website. But I might not want that when my website is brand new and incomplete. So if this were on the real internet, I might want to turn that off. Don't let the search engines find me. Although it does say it's up to the search engines to honor this. And usually the real search engines like Google, Bing, and Yahoo will. There's a bunch of other like little search engines that just rip off the other search engines. Um, but we'll get to all of that a little later. Does this screen make sense? You are creating the name of your website. You're putting whatever username and password you want to be able to log in with it and install. Does that, does that screen make sense? Let's click install. It'll think about it for a moment. It'll put, um, it'll put stuff into the database. It'll start to create a WordPress site. It'll say success. If you mistyped the name of your database or other things, it might give you an error, but mine seems to say success. So I'll click login. For our notes here, we're running the WordPress installation. We're going through the process. You're creating your website for your password and such. Um, and then um, to see your site like a visitor, to see your website like r how regular people would see it, it's basically localhost slash whatever the name of your site, in my case, my site. But then if I want to see my site, to see your site as an admin, if I want to log into my site, make changes to my site, add stuff to my site, the address is a little different. There's actually two of them. It's the name of the site slash wp-admin or the one it's giving me right now, which is equivalent. Both of these will work. I usually memorize this one. That's just e the short, less to type. They both take you to the same place. They both take you to the main login screen as an admin. Regular users um, would see you know, the main site, but me as an admin would see this. And just to kind of get ahead of ourselves a little bit, eventually, when this is all on the real internet, we'll say real internet example one day I want to have victorsbakery.com so people are going to visit my customers are going to visit my site on the real internet with that address but then if I want to log in as the administrator that's the wp-admin at the end so you see here what we've got. We've got this local host part, but then there's the name of my site, and then either view it as a user or view it as an admin. And on the real internet, there's the name of my site slash admin screen. <coughs> or the alternative, wp-login.php. That's just for your info right there. If we get to this point and it says log in, okay, great. Let's uh, close your web browser completely and we'll take a break. And then when we come back, we will see actually how to use it. If you're already logged in, that's great. Go ahead and close it completely. Don't just minimize it. Close your web browser completely. We'll take a break. And when we come back, um, we'll log back into our site and we'll see what, what, what do we have to work with. It's 1.55. We'll take a break until 2.05. We'll have the second half of the lecture after that to further learn the basics of what we need to do in order for the homework assignment. So we'll be back in 10 minutes.